the Red Beard Show. Thanks for joining me. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Got Vagabond Glass in the shop today. I do. Stoked on that. We've already had some fun in the kiln. And uh, yeah, we're we got monsters in the house. Watch out. <laughs> so uh, gosh, how should we start the show? I think we should start the show with showing off some of Rick's work. Show you what it's all about. Sure Check this camera angle for y'all. How's the sound, everybody? Is it all good? I adjusted it a little bit today because I tend to yell at the mic. Got that big voice of mine. All right, Rick, come on. Let me bring the. I'll bring the tripod over a little bit, and that way, right. Let's set it right here, and that way you can just hold it right up to the screen. So here's some of my uh, classics: the snail, carved spoon, teeth, eyeballs, the whole bit. But what I've been working on lately is making the eyeballs spin. Spinning eyeballs, no shit. Which I'm pretty proud of. I think you should be very proud of, that's pretty sick. Here's another zombie, spinning eyeball. And the other eyeballs hanging out there. Bloody teeth on the guy too. That's insane, buddy. I don't only make ugly things, sometimes I make pretty things. Classic Sherlock. Been making these for a long time. How long have you been working? Since 98. Off and on since 98. <laughs> nice. And You're old uh, school like me, brother. Yeah, I got one more cool. to show. Oh, we got something up here to show. This is pretty cool. This is what uh, we've been working on recently, last night actually. Can I spin it? Yep. Check this out. Dude's got a pizza cutter. And today on the show, I'm going to finish off a sign that goes in his hand that's going to say, We'll Kill for Pizza. <laughs> and if you're interested in getting this piece or checking out some of Vagabond's work, head down to Mega Ill. They're opening a new shop, I guess, right next door, or maybe the display is inside the Mega Ill, but that's where a lot of this work is headed, uh, as well as a lot of my work. I've been working hard for the last week on that work. So welcome to the community, to that new shop in Vancouver. So, uh, what are you going to do today? What are we going to do today? Well, let me show you. Let me put the camera back here. And I will show you what we got in the kiln. What we're working on. Oh, there we go. Let me check my angle. I'll try to check the chat often. So let me know if I screw up my camera angle again. And uh, all that. Okay. So, here we have... Uh, monster face. So this guy, uh, we're going to put a mail joint on the top of it, and we're going to turn that into an oil rig. So this one's also, it's hot, but I'll give it a little spin. That one's got a spinning marble as well, a uh, spinning eyeball. So we're going to put a joint on here, a downspout down where the water will be. And so all we need to do yet is a some type of mouthpiece. And we had something in thought, in mind, thinking maybe, uh, a claw where you where you'll smoke out at the top of the claw. Sounds good. I was thinking maybe or a, or, a, or a tentacle. Maybe we'll get some suckers after right on the right on here. So is it an arm? Is it a tentacle? It don't matter. It's a monster. So let's see. What do we got to do? Well, I've got to pull a tube, prep it out, and then we'll roll it in some print. This is what Vagabond uses a lot of powdered glass. So let's see if you can see that. This is just, he puts his powdered glass in this tray and then rolls it up. Anyway. And let's... At some point you gotta show up your uh, dichro. Oh shit! You guys wanna see what I made last week? The result of the dichro shizzle and your bling bling dizzle wizzle? Here we have it. Check this out. Pretty happy with this piece. Yeah. It's got a full dichro ribbon around the bottom, just like we made on the show. And I attached the two uh, opal, three opals in each teardrop there. Let's see if I can get you a close up of that. Three opals in each of those teardrops at the base. And that helps it stand. The piece stands just like that. And it's got two passages for the water. So here's the action. Oh. 
and I doubt you can see that on cam but anyway pretty happy with that piece turned out great all right so I'm gonna break down a tube this is the first thing we do when it comes to glass blowing uh, our, our tubing comes in a box of uh, what is that four foot lengths so the first thing I got to do is break this down in half so we call that pulling points and Previously, I've always done this work ahead of the show, but I realized uh, this is kind of, you know, this is what it's all about, where we start from. So, I just heat up the middle of the tube. And I'm heating up about, uh, about an inch, an inch and a half of this. And that will, when I pull it out, that will be my next blow tube show you what I mean. So it's just getting liquid now. I can feel it being all bendy. Get my heater. So after several years, I don't even have to look down at this anymore. I'm just going to do it blind, do it by feel. It's, and you're pulling up points. So there I pulled the two into this one long handle, which I will now split in two. Now when that cools down, that's going to be the blow tube. That's what I hold the whole piece by as I'm making it. Voila! Just got to pop the end to let the air go through. Folks, doing oh riffle rifle. How do you pronounce your name, Riffle? I guess it's rifle. Nice to see you again, Wave. Thanks for joining, Big Baker. Right on, dude. All right, boys, girls. Thanks for joining me. Glad to see us. Let me know what you're smoking. I'm always interested in that. I'm gonna pack up a volcano bag right now. Vaporizing is best for me. We're listening to fish on the old radio. Looks like Rick's building an eyeball. Should we tune into what Rick's doing while I fill up my volcano bag? Let's check Rick, it out. Uh, what are you up to, my man? A little eyeball spinner, little eyeball marble. So I want to put some white, roll it in some red frit for the red around the eyes. Put a dab of some Alaska thunder for the uh, pupil, the iris. I love that color, Alaska thunder. Good color. It's like a black with a streak of silver in it or something. Got just the right amount. Deadly. Kind of gives you a, a streak of striking colors. Right on, we're smoking OG Kush and Purple Kush. Someone's a Kush fan, eh? That's Rifle. Yo, you're smoking the pizza right now, eh? Ah, at the pizza joint. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, that was a funny show yesterday on Jerry's show. Great content. I'm, ho I'm hoping that when that gets uploaded to YouTube, there won't be any uh, pauses and delays like there was yesterday watching it. Great show. Can't wait to get down to Mega Ill to taste that medicated pizza. There'll have to be a future show of the week because they're not this week, even though we've mentioned them a couple times. This week's head shop of the week is Hempy's Gifts and novelties. Hempy's and yeah. based in Langley. Go to Big ups, lots of love to Randy and his crew. Chad. Chad, the manager. All the folks down there are so kind and so knowledgeable, which is really important when you're shopping for a new medical delivery device. You need to know what you're getting. You need people that know the artists, that are connected with people. And Hempy's has all that. Not only do they got amazing smokeware from your finest local artists, but they also got amazing clothes. And uh, they've got three locations. So check them out. They got a Langley shop, two shops in Langley, one on the downtown strip, one uh, over by the Willowbrook Mall. But also they got a shop in White Rock. And uh, Randy Kane is the kindest, most, uh, most beautiful man uh, I can think of right now. He is running for the mayor of Langley. So that says something about his uh, civic responsibility. And uh, he recently flew to Winnipeg to, uh, as he said, mediate uh, between the, the, the people involved uh, to help sort out a cause for that Hemp Haven head shop. 
and uh, and he did just that. So those charges were stayed, and uh, Hemp Haven's back in business. So big ups to Randy Kane. We love you, man. I love coming down to visit you in your shop. It's always a treat. I'm actually making an order for Randy next, so I'll bring it to you in just a couple weeks, Randy. He has a great selection of local glass. Totally, and he labels every artist with their name and their company name, and uh, it's very much like an art gallery. It art as well. Yeah, artists really appreciate that when they're given that, even that little bit of recognition. Like, all we want is our name on the piece, right? Well, yeah. So anyway, well, and to get paid for the piece, which, you know. <laughs> So he's just rolling the back of the eyeball in some red uh, powder, colored powder glass, and that gives it kind of a bloodshot look on the back of the eyeball. It's important to have a perfect marble for the spinners, otherwise they can get stuck. It's got to be perfect sphere, eh? Perfect. Uh, someone asked, what are you working on the bet? Is it a champion? Champion. It is indeed. I'm, I'm still new on the champion, so I'm a little slow on it, but I love it. Oh, yeah. So he's just using a marble mold there, and that's just got some spherical divots in the carbon, and he rolls it in that to get, a, to get half of the marble perfect. Basically, you work on marbles half of the time. You get one side perfect, Switch your punty around and then get the other side. Looking good. Let's get her close up. See if I can hold it still enough for the camera to see. Hold it that way. Yeah, big a bond. Lots of fun. Okay, I'm gonna move the camera back here. And I shall start the piece that will be the top of this rig. I also need to uh, get the downspout into the rig. So let me just check my camera angle. Bear with me, folks. I'm not a technical genius, yo. I'm a blast blower, not a not a film editor. But I'm working on it. Do it. Mm -mm. 414. Alright, so let's get a section of clear. So I'm just going to pull points off this. I'm going to make the uh, top of this oil ring in two pieces. I think I'll make the hand. And then I'll make the arm or tentacle or whatever it might be that's attached to the claw. The hand, the claw, the paw. It's kind of fun working with monsters and carving the glass. Because uh, really, what does a monster look like? Use your imagination. We're not really limited by anything here. If we want to give it two eyes, three eyes. Or at least the tentacles. Okay. The, uh Company. Good idea. Is that peach and purple? Uh, no. Origin glass. Coral sticks. All right. So that's how I pull a fret. I might have shown you that before, but there's the. I'll probably use that for the the tentacle, and then I shall make one more for the claw. time a little bit smaller this time so that's how I decide how big the piece is going to be how big a prep do you start with it's all about the mass of glass camera over there when he comes to carving the end of it because uh, when I say carving we'll point out the tools he uses. Are you about ready to do that? Tell uh, me when you're going to start. Yeah I'm going to start the base. 
Okay, I'll move the camera over. Because I think what he's doing is pretty freaking interesting. So there, just pulling points. I'm gonna now dip this in the powdered glass and, uh, and make a hand. And maybe we will adjust cameras again in just a minute, but I want you to watch what Rick's up to. This, this is really cool. I got some light, start with some light for some eyeball. Make sure it's nice and melted in all the way around and clean. It's not melted in good when you go to squish it, you don't get a perfect circle. Our torches are burning propane and oxygen, not acetylene and oxygen. The propane gives a much cleaner burn. It doesn't leave any black soot on your piece. Can you answer a question? This must have a quite carbo. Is that the pupil of the eye? That is. You got the white of the eye, the pupil of the eye. Everything melted in nicely before your next stage. Pull off the tip of the color because that tip usually gets kind of burnt, a little bit of air bubble. I got a question for you, Vegabond. I'm over here dipping the, the clear bubble into the powdered color. Yes. How many dips do you suggest? Uh, at least three, and okay. sometimes up to five. Okay. I like a nice, fully coated piece, and that way it's, uh, it just looks better. You want to see what I'm talking about, folks? I'll tip the camera on this time. You ready? So here, I'm heating up the glass. And then I roll it in this tray of color, just like that. So I got my white, color my eye, my black dot, now I'll put another clear to get the magnified look. Clear. I rolled it in red frit to coat it. You can use a solid stick of color to do the same, but I find the if you use frit, the other pieces don't with frit, you do this with frit, it's got the same texture, a little bit of grittiness to it. So it really blends in nice and looks like one piece. Oh yeah, happy 420. I'm smoking some lovely uh, blueberry grape keef on top of a uh, a fucking sweet gib lock. Gibson. Props, Gibson. Tank was supposed to be here this week. We ran into some really shitty weather between here and the coast. Coquihalla Highway is closed down with a meter deep avalanche. So he'll hopefully be here for next week. And it worked out great. The Vegabond's able to come over and show us how he does this. Watch this. So. Uh, can I narrate, brother? Sure, sure, sure. So he's just using that uh, thin metal paddle to carve into the glass. And when I say carve, he's just pressing in a thin line there and dipping it in the water to keep his tool cold. Because that tool is not carbon, that's just stainless steel. Yes. So you keep it out it of the will, plane. It will stick. And totally. It does happen all the time, but... Not when the camera's on. Hopefully not. <laughs> it never happens. And so he's just he's just working the wrinkles in the eyebrows. Do 
want everything to melt into each other. You want to carve it, but you want it to melt in and not have, what would you call it? Sharp angles. Sharp angles. <laughs> the acute, acute angle here. Acute angles. So that's one eye. Keep going. I think I'm going to do a spinner on. Yeah, man. Are you? I think I'll go, go for it. it. I haven't seen anyone do uh, spinning eyeballs in a piece before, before a bag bond here. So I've, I've had <laughs> the idea in mind for almost a year. Not quite been able to figure out how to do it. And of course, Last Master Red Beer is like, oh, we'll just do this. And boom, it worked. Here we go. We're in business. Yeah, I've done some different types of spinning marbles, but I never thought of a freaking eyeball. It's awesome. Recess. Recess spinner? Yeah. It's great. People love us spinning something on their piece, something to do while they're smoking. Everyone's nervous. <laughs> Likes to fidget. of euphoria and happiness. It's awful. It's awful. Yeah, I've realized it's awful. Can you sense the sarcasm in my voice? It's so awesome. I'm so happy that I'm able to have a medicine that whose only side effect gives me a good mood and an appetite. And you want everything perfectly clean. This end, as thick as this end, as thick as this end, or as thin. Carving shouldn't work technically, but you make so many messed up points that I think the heat disperses, doesn't know where to go, it doesn't concentrate on one particular point, and cracks. That's what I try to find. The more messy you are, the less cracks you usually have. I think if I could also say, uh, you're you're so used to reading your heat base. You've been working for 14, 15 years. You're not letting that piece cool down too far. You're not going back no. into it. You're not carving cold glass, or no. you're not uh, you know you're not stressing that piece out. That's no. why your shit's not cracking, brother, because you're a professional. Maybe. Yeah. You just uh, I think that a lot of it is unconscious by this time. Been working for so long, and a lot of it's on autopilot, right? Yeah. When people watch you work, they're like, "Oh, that looks easy." Yeah. <laughs> it's because you're on autopilot. Yeah. Sometimes I think it's easy too. Hey, I think do you mind? I'm gonna turn the camera around for a second and show. Uh, I'm gonna just making this little disc into. Uh, let's try that camera angle. Now oh, we better go back where we were. So I'm just making this little disc into a hand and I just did the first cut and I'm going to demonstrate how we cut the glass because it's pretty cool. Once the glass is liquid, you can cut it with a pair of scissors. Pretty awesome. So there I've cut what I will think will be, you know, one of the, one of the fingers on the claw. So I'm going to heat up to the middle of the bubble. I'm just going to take my scissors and snip right into that. Move this one over a little. Put some room. So there's how we start to get a cloth. Snip it again. show you how I'm using scissors to snip up that cloth. Now I'm going to bring it back over to Vagabond. 
because he is going to apply on the nose, up through the mouth and teeth. Head and shoulders, knees and toes. <laughs> that could have been the title of the show, too. <laughs> I like your title. Ah, monsters! <laughs> Alright, so I just did a nose. We got one eye, we got a mouth pushed, we got the second hole where I'll drop in a marble. Right now I'll do some gums. says my teeth look like English teeth. <laughs> no offense, England. <laughs> Just the royalty, you know. Small gene pool, man. <laughs> it will only breed with 1% of the population. No. That's what you get for being royal. It's laid on some gums. It's a nice uh, cotton candy pink. This color is by Glass Alchemy, it's called Jawbone. Really nice for teeth. The trick is to melt everything in nice. Nice and soft and gooey. Some shears. And we cut. We'll do the next one up closer. Hey man. Uh, yeah. Is it okay? This is our collab, right? Yeah. Uh, is it okay if it's given the peace sign up top? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hippie! I know! There you have it, that's how you cut the teeth. Amazing, eh? Just cuts right into there. Don't tell anybody. It's a secret. So Rick, how did you how did you learn this, man? Well, Who's your inspiration? Where'd you get this? Uh, I've seen I've been to, you know, quite a bit of it on the internet. So. Oh yeah, I've been, uh, I've been working since 98. It's 16 years now, buddy. We're getting old. And uh, always did spoons and more simple things. Uh, a lot of necklaces, pendants. And I always saw salts work. Everywhere I went, every store. I've lived all over the place, multiple countries. Always seen salts work and always, how the fuck did he do that? Yeah. <laughs> how did he do that? And, uh, Finally, I was uh, online and saw there was a webinar of salts. He was given an online class, and I went on, paid the money, and uh, it's the best money I ever spent. And it uh, transformed my glass life, so props to salt. And then uh, recently, I've been playing a lot with you here in the shop, learning all sorts of new tricks. So props to you, increasing the skill. Hey, everybody. I've been on my own since the beginning. I had some... Uh, some teachers, Backyard Glass, Mike and Jason, Southeast Dave, Nug Nug, and uh, Pete Waddell. And uh, since 98, I've been on my own after I played with those guys until we started playing together here. So I feel you, man. That's how I did it, too. It's, uh, it's fun to learn new tricks and increase your skill and forever a student. And there's always something to learn. That's kind of one of the cool things about glass. You can be a master, but you still mess up, and there's still things to learn. <laughs> yeah. Mm-mm. Sick. Let me check the chat, make sure we're all good. 
Sound all good in our chat? Checking in. Hey, Panda's in the house. Thanks for joining the Panda. Hi, Society's there, eh, Rick? Hey, yeah. Justin. Thanks for coming out, Justin. Thanks for the help on Instagram. Gibbe. That's not the Gibbe that we all know and love, is it? Is that Gibson? We've got Jeremiah in the house. Sounds good. Thanks, Jeremiah. Big Baker. Kind of fun doing this live. We uh, did some playing around with the GoPro this week. So uh, we don't have any footage ready for this week's show, but uh, we're testing. We're figuring it out. And uh, Vegabon's been helping me a lot with that. Been helping each other. We're going into Vancouver next week. And I am stoked because I'm going to go to the mechanic in Chilliwack where yeah. my 1960 Mercury school bus is awaiting. Yeah, buddy. She's purring like a champ now. And the idea is we'll be filming, uh, driving that rig around the country, filming this show from different artists' uh, studios. Collecting those collaboration pieces that we make and having a huge show at the end and auction and raise money for wicked causes and make moves on the scene, you know? So I am stoked to go see my bus. It's this 1960 short bus. Yeah. Now we got some horns. So we still got an empty eye socket there. Is that was that how you'll leave it, man? I don't know. There we go. What's going on with that? I'll do my best not to drop it and chase it around the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's been done. <laughs> Here's the hand I'm working on. It's coming into shape. See that? The fit? Yeah, it fits, but I gotta add some more eyebrow. Yeah. This one is a fit and put back, fit and put back. So uh, it takes time. Oh, show. Sure. And I've only been doing it for what? A couple of days here. Yeah, this is really recent tech for you, eh? This is brand new uh, uncharted territories, but a whole lot of fun. And then marbles, you saw it here first. So you're just adding some more eyebrow. And some eyebrow so I can shape it around once I drop the marble in, pull the eyebrow around it to encase it and trap it. Yeah, yeah. Let's move the camera over here for a bit. We'll give Rick a little bit of space to do his magic. Watch him in the back there. Let's see how's that angle look. And that's what I'm working on. Got to get it back in the torch quick here. I'm just applying the jet black claws. <coughs> The powder color we used for this piece kind of has a purple color to uh, to it. Vagabond took a scoop out of every color of the rainbow and it turned out great. Yeah, it's pretty red. It's rainbow monster. <laughs> oh, and after this, I got to make up the sign that says "We'll kill for pizza." Yes, sir. So just doing a claw. Sharpen it up like so. Alright, so that's what I got so far. And now, I think it would be really fun to keep the two fingers. I'm going to tuck these two down and the thumb over and it give us a piece of sign. <coughs> Why not, eh? And then I'm going to use the same tool Rick was. I might have to borrow yours, but. And uh, I'm going to carve in some knuckles and some skin wrinkles on the hand. Definitely uh, count the number of 
the number of times I've done this technique on one hand, I've not done a lot of uh, carving. Yeah, but his first one was perfect, so. My first bike was perfect, too, all those years ago. Was it really? Yeah. Oh, my God. Like, yeah. sellable perfect. No I got it somewhere. It's broken in half, straight in half. Oh, no way. Uh, but yeah, the first one I ever made was just a perfect, uh, a perfect wow. little spoon. I think I had uh, three holes in my first bowl and two more holes along the neck of the spoon. <laughs> <laughs> Some big blobs of just patches, just plugging holes. <laughs> uh, it's dust tight now, does it? My first uh, two-piece Sherlock, though, I did without a kill. And I sold that to the uh, the DJ of Limp Biscuit, who was also the DJ of House of Pain, back in 98. That was pretty rad. That is pretty rad. And I one glass maybe two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so there I've curled around the two claws there. That looks really sweet. And now the thumb. So I, let me, uh, I'll order what I'm doing here. I'm heating up the thumb, the whole thumb. I'm heating up my uh, temporary handle here so it'll stick. I'm going to stick it to the end of the claw. Oh, not hot enough on the thumb. No big deal, we'll try that again. Heat the thumb up a little more. It's good to do this in a few stages too. And now I'll just touch on the end there and bend it over. Now 
I'm, I'm not being nearly as precise as I could be here. I'm sure uh, uh, Vagabond here does a million dollar better job than me, but that gives us the idea. It's just giving it some wrinkle in the, in the surface of the glass. Oh, we got to do the palm of the hand. Someone's got to read his palm someday. You're going to be a long life ahead of you. Hey, actually, since I'm the creator here, yeah, yeah. I am giving him a long life. There you, go. you shall live a long time. No crap for you. All right, so that's what I got. I still don't know how. I think that he's going to be... Uh, I think I'll pop the hole on the thumb somehow or something. Figure that out. I also got this piece in the kiln. So this is something Vegan, Vegamon and I did this afternoon. He made the monster at the end of the tube. Here, let me add. Uh, and that's the perk, the, the smoke will come out between his teeth. There you can see that guy. So this will be a direct inject rig. Uh, so I just got to put a top on this yet. Yeah. Direct inject means it has a male glass on glass joint on top of the bubbler can. And the smoke directly injects, so I don't know why it's called that. Anyway, how'd it go? It went, that's good. So I was thinking, that's pretty cool, eh? Yeah, that's pretty cool. That could just stand off the piece too and make a different for the milk because I don't know how I'll pop this yet. Maybe curl it around or it's put a hole right here even, eh? The tomb. Yeah, I think right there. Yeah. So it's kind of, you can do it so it's kind of doing a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> Word! Word! <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, well I better get that in the kiln for a little while. And I suppose I could do the direct inject part. That's what I was just talking about. So this is the can that we're working on. We got a couple fangs. I might tuck these horns up tighter yet. We'll see. Those can be moved around yet. But he's got lots of carving around the eyes, nostrils, some fangs, forked tongue. And what I'm going to do now is just see what I've got to fit for the uh, downstem in my kiln. Double check that camera angle. And so that one's a little too short. I have three of these in my kiln. So this is what I've made ahead of time. That's just the downspout. And it uh, I make it out of 12 mil. It's got five holes in the bottom, one at the very bottom, and four around the side. That's pretty important when you're smoking to have good percolator action. And each piece needs its own, uh, you know, each piece needs its own type of percolator. Sometimes a two hole, sometimes a four hole, and sometimes the five hole. Okay, so I want to put that back in the kiln right now. I think I'm going to work on that sign. That'd be pretty fun. Yeah. So I think I just need a bit of black. The sign that says, we'll kill for pizza. And uh, maybe I'll just mash it flat, but uh, I'd be, I'm more interested in finishing the monster rig we're working on now. But uh, I need to let that soak in the kiln for a minute, so I'll work on that. I need a paper bag too, is what I need. 445, time for another smoke. Yeah, if you don't mind, freshy if you. Thank you. So I got me a nice big chunk of white glass. Holding up to the wrong camera there. And I am going to uh, put a candle on the end of this. And actually that's... There we go. Gather this up into a ball and flatten it. And uh, make
make it into a rectangular sign. We'll have to make something similar for Randy. Uh, we've got an order for Hempies right now for some collab pieces. And uh, I really appreciate that. I hope you all can get down to Hempies and check out their store. It's hands down one of the nicest shops in uh, the Lower Mainland. And uh, hands down the nicest owner and the, and the greatest staff. Uh, I gotta say, I just love those guys a lot. Go for Randy. Vote for Randy. If you're in Langley, vote for Randy for mayor. Uh, so he, he's been active politically and like as, a, as an activist and, uh, on many fronts. He uh, was involved with a dispensary in Langley that got shut down, raided by the police, if I recall correctly. And uh, he, he made major strides in that uh, they wanted to, to process him as a criminal because his dispensary was over their limits in some regard or, or what. To be honest, I don't have the exact specifics in mind, but uh, he, he broke ground in that he argued and won that he should just be, he's a patient, he's not a criminal, and he should be dealt with as such with a Health Canada official, not a bloody uh, cop in a jail. So uh, that was huge. Uh, that set precedent. As you may or may not know, the uh, court system is just basically a system that looks at precedent. If it's been done before, it can be done again. So, And another groundbreaking, in case you didn't hear it on Jared's show yesterday, there was a, a, a BC judge threw out Canada's uh, 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 mandatory minimum, uh, deemed it uh, constitutionally uh, in, invalid or whatever you want to say. Sorry, I don't know how to describe that completely, but look that up. That is good news because um, that that will relate directly to the war on drugs and what Harper's government can and can't do and what they're going to try to do. It's all very interesting. I say again, 2014 is going to be an interesting year. Yeah. I found, I heard something really kind of funny, sad, I don't know what way to look at it, but uh, a friend of mine works for Tweed and was telling me that uh, the, the, the master grower there killed 2,000 plants in one foul fucking sweep because he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Oh, man. <laughs> and actually, it is a sad situation because the fellow of Tweed is apparently a very nice guy. He's got bazillions of dollars and trying to put it in the right place in his mind. And Anyway, what a shit show. I'd be interested to see what medicine comes out of these companies. Apparently, the fellow's a, a professional uh, tomato grower. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> anyway. There'll be more on that. I'll see if I can get some fun, uh, some fun little tidbits of information from the inside. I promise to keep my friend uh, anonymous. Uh, you know, he's he just he has a job for uh, Tweed, and he'd like to keep it. And uh, yeah, and actually, I'd like on a next note, same kind of subject. Kirk Tussaud recently. Kirk Tussaud is a lawyer in Canada who uh, defends a lot of cannabis flower crime uh, folk. And a uh, brilliant individual, and uh, I know him actually, and he defended me when I got busted. And uh, anyway, he posted a, a brilliant post on Facebook to let me sum up that uh, it's, it's not helping us. It's not helping the cause for folks to be talking shit about, uh, about people like Tweed and, and all those other folks maybe. You know, like our cause here is to get it, my cause, I, I hope it's yours too, is to legalize this plant. For everybody, you know, uh, you, for as a consenting adult, adult, sorry, not everybody, children. This will keep it out of the hands of children. If we can tax it, regulate it, uh, normalize it, you know, it's just, a, it's just a bloody plant with no debts ever. So anyway, we shouldn't be talking shit about these companies and the individuals who choose to go with the MMPR, because there's that, there, that's a lot of good things about the MMPR is that it's it's there's going to be uh like six producers or more out there for people that don't grow their own 
you know, for people that don't have a farm or a garden or a basement or whatever, right? Or time. Or time or want or skill. Yeah. You know, like yeah. not everyone can or wants to grow wheat. Uh, that's the only thing I really have a problem with, with the MMPR, the new system, the Canadian new system, is that, just that, that they want to take away the growers' right. And uh, on that topic, I urge you all, anyone that can spare a minute or a dollar, to help fight this through the MMAR Coalition Against Repeal. Uh, look it up online. There's a great website. We've got some good concerts coming up to raise money. Uh, we're, I'm the head of the Glass Committee, the National Glass Committee. And what that means is I'm looking for donations and I'm looking for any glass blowers out there that have glass that we can sell and donate the money to the MMA, our Coalition Against Repeals Legal Fund. So I urge you all to check that out. We need some help. It's a lofty legal battle. It's now a constitutional challenge that, they, uh, that uh, John Conroy is up with. So anyway, I'm interested to see all that. That's happening in March, March 18th. And there's a fundraiser in Victoria on the island next week, I believe Tuesday or Wednesday. I wasn't able to put anything together for this one. And I think I'm a little late to get it to them on time now. We'll kill for pizza. I'm just building a white slab that will nice. be held up on a stick. And actually, I could just use that end as the stick right there. All right. Uh, well, thanks for listening to my rant. It's not a rant. It was a plea. Support the cause. Put your money where your mouth is. Put your actions where your mouth is. That's what Randy Kane does. We could all learn from that amazing individual. Also, Vagabond, where do people find your work, man? Artist of the Week, Vagabond. Oh, we got Randy Stores, Hempies. Hempies. Uh, Rio Kadagan, we got uh, Hemp City, Mary James, we got uh, Valley M, and the uh, Crazy Emporium. High Society, when he opens to the public, that's he's a, online right now. That's in Burning. He's got a uh, he's got the nicest selection of uh, my expensive pieces, I think as well as quite a bit of yours. He does indeed. And uh, he's doing good things. He's going to go all locals, no import glass, all high end, all art, collectible art. Is what we make. Awesome. So we can smoke out of our pieces, but at the end of the day, I think it's art and uh, should be treated as such. Or is what I would hope it would be. Yeah. And, uh, Treat your glass, glass with glass. Uh, Vagabond Glass on Facebook or Instagram. And uh, other than that, most of the stores in Vancouver have a couple pieces. Uh, yeah, you're also at CCHQ, 307 CCHQ. West Hastings. CCHQ, we're coming to see you uh, hopefully this week. Put some spinners in that store, it would be nice. We'll be down there on Tuesday. Are we going together, hopefully? Uh, it'll yeah. be fun. Yeah, it'll be fun. For a road trip. Yep. Go for a rip, eh? Go for a rip. So I think a uh, black handle on the sign. Oh, I like black. I'm gonna put a whole fucking stick on. Oh, I got some. Uh, I got something. I got the onyx. There you go. That'll work. There you go. And then I'm gonna set this down and uh, go back to the other piece.
show off what you're up to? Where should we put the camera? Uh, I'm just going to do another one, but uh, I can show the last one how it turned out. Last one. Eyeball spins, but I'm not going to touch it right now because it's freaking hot. Come on, give it a lick. Just a little DNA in there. Alright, I'm just glaring open the end of this. <laughs> That's so weird. The eyeball's looking at me while I'm doing this, <laughs> and it's vibrating. Like one of those creepy uh, spooky kid dolls, man. baby dolls, that the yeah. eyeball always watching you. Okay, so I gotta get the male part ready. Let's get that out. So, I just ordered these from Vancouver. They come like that. That's the male joint. I tend to use uh, factories often for when the nail sits on top. It's kind of a, it's, it's, it is definitely easier, but it's it's, a, it's the right diameter and thickness for that nail to seat properly, which I know uh, all the jab heads appreciate. And we're trying to keep the price point down on this piece too, so no hand ground joints on this one. Oh, I almost smoked out of the wrong, smoking my joint. Oh. In this uh, male joint in half. This is an 18 millimeter male joint. Got my diamond shears. What do you call these again? Diamond uh, jack shears. Ah, something like that. Anyway. I just squeeze it onto that. <coughs> and that gives it a little groove. And that's how we cut that nice and easy. So this is the top of the direct inject. This is how we do the direct inject seal. Maybe I'll try a new camera angle over here on my right. I don't know if you'll be able to see anything or not. Put that eyeball in. Uh, and the last one, I'm going to do the second one here. So I just flared that out, and now I'm going to cap it on the top of that piece once I put the downspout in. So let's pull that out, get my tweezers. up the rim of that. Just like so. Get marvering the uh, downspout in. Perfect yet. I still have to add the cap. 
so that's what we've got so far. The downspout is down in there. Now I will grab the male that I've got here. I need to put a plug in the bottom of this one so I can puff through and and even out thin out my walls. Just welding the 18 millimeter nail to the top of the can. This is what we call a direct inject rig. And uh, I guess it, the name explains it more than I can. You're directly injecting the smoke into the water, I guess. maybe three or four of them just kind of out like this I think it, it kind of looks like that one-eyed monster uh, whatever from Simpsons with the tentacle feet right the globe on their head oh the, the aliens yeah we'll have to make those sometime. Yes. Oh, that worked out great man happy with that Beautiful. so maybe I'll continue on the uh, elbow and the arm let's let's take a look at what Vagamon's doing we're gonna get a close-up of him Thanks for coming on the show today, hey, man. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. I hope you all go visit Vagabond's work, comment on it, share it on Facebook. We Please. all love it when you share that shit. The more people see it, the more potential customers we get. That's right. I've got a second one going already. This one's going to be a single eye spinner. Teeth are in, no nose for single eye, one horn on. I'm going to put on a second horn here. Sweet! I'll go check the chat, make sure we're still broadcasting. Looks like, <laughs> looks like Panda's got the chat under control. Yeah, but he's a fast typer, man. Fuck. Give her. Hey, Taiwan's in the chat. We got someone in Taiwan out there. Really? Right on. How's your weather out there? We're fucking cold here in Canada. I'm wearing my snow pants. Sandal life. Taiwan. So there we go. So I'll put that in the kiln and make an eyeball. I should mention to the fella in Taiwan, Vagabond and I are available for personal classes if you want to fly us out. There. Sure, 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 sure. That would be no problem at all. Five star hotel is okay, or a ten. I'd be okay with that. Oh, I'm fine with that too. I'd be okay with that. <laughs> I can't wait to do some traveling. It's gonna be fun. Anyway, thanks for joining us, chat. Nice and warm, no snow, eh? No doubt. <laughs> yep. I wish I had a jab right now. I don't. I'll have to take care of that on Tuesday. Go visit one of my favorite dispensaries. I have a hard time picking what dispensary to go to when I go to Vancouver. I'm a member of about six of them. 
so, like the uh, boys that I medicate. They they are good people. There. Yeah, I like them. They put us up for a night. That was nice of them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Vagabond had the fun time at Kush Cup last year. Maybe you remember he was at the Health Expo, and uh, well, the expo was a bit of a shit show. Uh, you know, no one's fault, but it was uh, not very well attended. Which means that we had a we had a blast. We just we just fucked around in our in our. I parked a school bus right inside the building at the P and E in Vancouver, Every and uh, we had a dab bar going in the bus and. Uh, blowing glass inside a building at a PE. The first person ever to do that, making pipes inside the PE building. Police officers walking by. Yeah. While you're on the torch. And with the yeah. with the Kush cups full of beautiful flower. Yeah. And they just walked by and said, "Oh," and turned around and walked away. Yeah. I put about a quarter ounce at least of uh, fine blueberry grapefruit out on display because I made all the trophies for that Kush cup. Yes, you did. And. Uh, and I made all the judges' pipes. I got a dirty one right here. Let me show you. Dirty pipe. Anyway, lots of fun. Thanks, Cloak Guide. Mark, Weed Guy. Uh, the Glass Guy in the limousine. Yeah, Glass Guy is in the limousine with Armin. Yeah. But I also, uh, I also like the Eden Dispensary. I like the Vancouver Dispensary. I'm friends with everybody, so I like to go by and say hi and visit. It's always good time. Support everybody. Yeah. Well, here's a Drewski. Is that you, brother? Thanks for tuning in. Drewski's a glass blower up in the Ottawa. Is it Ottawa area in Ontario? Oh, he's probably fucking cold right now too. Uh, are you gonna make it to the gathering, Drewski? I hope you can. Don't forget, everybody. Ottawa, yeah, man, that is juicy, good. Someone was under, I was hoping it was you. So anyway, uh, the glass gathering this year is July 4th, 5th, and 6th. Up in uh, beautiful Birkin, which is above Whistler. Uh, go to gcgg.ca. This is a party I host every year with about 30 glass blowers blowing glass at the same time under a big top tent. And uh, there's camping on site and uh, and security and it's just a lovely, lovely place. Good times. I hope you all can make it. Old school family type party. It is, yeah. It's really tight. Anyway, who else is in the old tech room? CK. Yeah, I think this is the seventh annual. I'll have to check the poster. I, I got a bad memory, as you all know. Every day is a new day with me. <laughs> oh, and I wore this t-shirt to, uh, I saw Panda talking about it on the chat, but treating yourself. There is gonna be a treating yourself cup this year. Oh. And in conjunction, or not, not in conjunction, at the same time as the Champs Expo. So uh, if you are interested in attending these events in Toronto, I've, it's the end of May, May 23rd, 24th, 25th, I think. May 2-4 weekend. And uh, I'm thinking of going. i got to get my pennies together and buy my flight soon. Uh, maybe I, I'm hoping to do a broadcast from there. Maybe I'll be a part of the Pot TV crew this year, I'm thinking. So uh, this is going to be a good time. Champs Trade Show in the States is massive. There's a business to business section and there's an open to public uh, on the next day and uh, there's a glass competition and games and I've been thinking and planning for quite a while about what I would like to do for this uh, contest and uh, Vagabond actually knows what it is. It's 20 bucks, tell me, send me 20 bucks and I'll no tell you. Way. I swore him the secrecy. I'm going to keep a lid on it. I'm going to practice the technique and the piece and see if it works. Yeah, I think that'll win. It might be fun. I'm, a, I'm in this for a good time, man. I don't care if I win. Speaking of treating yourself, let me give a shout out. Uh, Jeremy from Rig Rags used to write from Treating Yourself. He uh, just got me a nice little gig, made all the eyeball pennants for the uh, Southern California Secret Cup, which uh, pretty rad. I'm pretty honored to do that. So uh, big thanks to Jeremy and uh, check out Rig Rags. Bandanas, big rags, they got all the spirals on, the sweet stuff, good gear. Hoodie sweatshirts, rig rags. And that's the secret cup in California. I've heard of that. That's When is Maybe that? Is that coming up uh, soon? It's, it's coming up pretty shortly, I believe. Early summer, spring? Yeah, yeah, you we'll can have find to look it, into that. You can find it on Facebook, all the info. they got a page there. 
Some fine extracts down there, I betcha. Oh, good times. I betcha. Right on, right on. Well, it's nice having you on the shop because I get to be behind the camera wow. having tokes. I think I'm gonna have another keep toke. Cleaning out my uh, my grinder, I'm just about there. I do this, I wait uh, for, oh, for a couple months from the uh, bottom of my space case. Lovely. Put that in my Gib lock. I know Gibson just filled an order for Randy, or yeah. is currently, so you can find Gibson at Hempy's Head Shop of the Week. And tank, tank better get out here quick. Yeah, too. tank's coming up. And actually, if Rick's in the neighborhood, we'll do. Uh, hopefully, we can do a three-way collab. Yeah, we got room on the bench. Tank's stoked on that. I got an idea. Me too, actually. All yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. That's one of the nice things about uh, being delayed. For instance, I've got a uh, a heady piece that I've been supposed to make for La Fumo. I don't know if you've ever heard of La Fumo pipe. They make a, an adapter, a connection that fits onto a, a pipe, uh, and you can put a nail on it or a flower bowl. And I honestly don't know so much about the product, but I know the, the person that's behind the product in Canada. Stand up, honest, beautiful per beautiful person. Beautiful people, him and his partner. Uh, so props to La Fumo for that. And so what I was going to say is that I've been planning this heady for him, and, uh, but I've had to put it off because of some stores that really needed glass and I don't want to let my people down. So, but in the meantime, ideas just keep coming. It's beautiful, I just, I'm stoked. So, uh, if you're watching the show, the Fumo, hang in there, man, it's getting better all the time. <laughs> I'm picking up, that, that's the double layer piece. And I think I will try to do it on camera. I'll show you once again, this was from the episode Double Double, please. And that's the section that I made during that show. Real colorful. Have you shown off your... Uh, your uh, that I'm playing on the chisel? You should show it again. Yeah, let's show it again. Sure. That's an amazing piece. Yeah. So, that's the piece we made last episode. The Dicro ribbon. I think there's one, two, three, four, five uh, wigwag sections stacked up. Six, I guess, sorry. And uh, two more here. And then this color is called Jackpot. It's got a lot of sparkle to it. At the top, this is a single bitch window wigwag. And then I curled the horns up and I did, added two teardrops. Each has three opals in it. Ah, kind of fun piece. And it is a recycler. With yeah. Pretty sweet action it's on that. Action. It's pretty hard not to keep it. <laughs> I tell you, man. I should actually try to keep a piece from every episode. That'd be pretty oh, fun to have like man. the greatest hits then at the end of the year. That would be great. Auction them off for uh, a good cause. That's yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. I'm in. I'll give you a piece. Yeah. So and again, if any glass blowers watching want to contact me to donate, and you know what, actually, I or sell cheaply. Uh, um, if, you, if you're unable to donate, but you think that you've got something we can use for the MMAR Coalition, uh, just give us a really great wholesale price. I'm going to put my own money out on the line, and I'm going to buy that off you, and I'm going to put the Coalition logo on it, and we're going to sell it with all as, as much proceeds as we can. So uh, what I'm saying is if we got to keep five bucks each for the gas, that's, that is acceptable. So... Uh, Anyway, I think you get the idea. Contact me personal uh, email if you got any questions about that. Sweet. So here he's just polishing the eyeball, heating up the lens, and then rolling it around in his uh, marble mold. And it's actually the edge of the marble mold that's doing all the work here. Sweet. As long as you can flick it and it spins good. Oh! There she goes. It happens. Awesome. Yeah, that'll spin. Woo! That was awesome again. Alright, let's get this camera back over here. 
think we're getting close to wrap up time here. Going for an hour and a little while. Hope you're all enjoying the show. Marb question, should the gather to be smaller than the mole? No, the gather should be larger than the mole. Actually, uh, it depends on what mole. Uh, this is what's called an infinite rim mole. So these are shaped differently and they are more of a uh, more of a funnel shape like so. And so the whole side acts as the edge of the mole. Where's my other marble mole? Here it is. This marble mole really displays it. These ones have a nice sharp ridge on them. And it's actually the ridge that you roll the marble on. So if you have like a one inch marble, I'll roll it on like the closest to one inch size. And then as it gets smoother, you go to the smaller marbles. So the final polish is always on a very small divot. And even like a four inch marble, I will end up on this small half inch divot. So uh, that's how that's used. We're actually going to do a marble show. I was thinking about that. Yeah. Uh, for sure. Yeah. I, I really enjoy making marbles. I've taken a couple courses. I did a course with uh, John Kabuki, marble artist. I took a course with Josh Sable, uh, another fantastic artist, uh, both in the States. And uh, they taught me a lot, and I've always enjoyed making marbles. Anyway, got me some beeline. All right, well, thank you all for joining us. We've had a great time. We've got another big show planned for next week. Tune in. <coughs> Until then. Show spinner one more time. Keep your torch lit. Show off that spinner. Vagabond glass. Check that shit out. Oh, now it's stuck. There she is. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Thanks for having me. All right, y'all. Be well. Be healthy. Try to stay organic.